So this is my four foot crosscut saw. I use it for cutting up firewood at my cabin. I picked it up about eight years ago at a flea market. It was rusted and pitted and the handle was all rotten. And at the time I knew very little about saws. And I knew I had to restore it in order to use it. But the first thing I did was build a new handle. And I also built this auxiliary handle so I could turn it into a two-man saw and it just makes it more comfortable to use. So I found a really good playlist on YouTube on how to restore a crosscut saw from start to finish. But I soon realized how much work it was going to be and I needed a lot of very specialized tools to get it done. Uh, these tools are very difficult to find and I ended up having to make most of them myself. When you're restoring a crosscut saw, everything has to be very precise in order for it to cut efficiently. So I ended up having to buy this leaf feeler gauge. It's one of the few tools I had to buy. All these I had to make myself. This is called a jointer. Uh, what it does is it bends this file in order to match the curve of the saw. Just by tightening or loosening these bolts, you can, it applies pressure to this file and bends it. When you're first restoring a saw, it's important to have all the teeth level at the beginning. This is for filing the raker teeth which I'll show you in a minute. Rocker gauge. This is a saw set for bending the teeth. I made from some pliers. Pin gauge and a raker gauge. So if you're not familiar with crosscut saws, these here are the cutting teeth. They're like a double-sided blade that cuts into the wood. And this here is a raker. Uh, each little point is like a little chisel and it cleans out what this part cuts. Uh, these raker teeth have to be slightly shorter than these cutting teeth. And I also have this triangular file for sharpening the teeth. So that's a lot of tools you need, plus there's also a lot of very precise steps involved just to get the saw cutting firewood efficiently. I also built this stand so I can tilt the blade, making it more comfortable when I'm filing. I also made this extra long handle for my file, and I got this uh, light rigged up. Very important to have good lighting. I'll probably need my reading glasses as well. So when I first bought this saw, I never imagined all the work it would take to sharpen it and to maintain it. Something I never thought I could do. I haven't sharpened this saw in probably two years. And unfortunately, I forgot a lot of the details on how to sharpen it. So I'm going to rewatch a lot of the videos I watched before, but this time I'm going to document all the steps. I'm going to make a little book, something I'll keep in my toolbox. So over the next few weeks, I will be relearning on how to use these tools and how to get the saw working efficiently for this winter at my camp.